You made thirty thousand dollars your first year, thirty-five thousand. Yeah. Uh, how much life production did you write in the in the last full twelve-month period uh, over the phone? I just cleared about. I wrote about half a million. A half a million, half dollars, a million dollars, all over the phone. All over the phone. Final expense. And you don't do that by calling twenty leads a day. No. <laughs> uh, you got to do a little bit more. I mean, you know, eventually you can get to the point where you might only end up making twenty calls, and then you, because your pipeline is so full, right? Yes. But yeah, I mean, you won't get there with doing this part time. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. We are in studio today in Louisville, Kentucky, with a very special guest today, all the way from the West Coast. Dude, you've been all over the world, but all the way from the West Coast. We're going to get into that world thing in just a minute. You're probably wondering who's on the other side, right? I know, in great anticipation, you're wondering who's coming in from the West Coast today to join us. All the way from Portland, Oregon, we've got life insurance legend, Legend in the house. You're going to hear why in a minute. You're going to want to hang on. This is going to be an epic episode. Mr. Roman Koval. Welcome to the Life Insurance Academy podcast, man. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. It's so exciting to have you here. Excited to be here, man. It's an honor. I've uh, been looking forward to this. Yeah. Dude, you've been on a little bit of a world tour this last month. Uh, getting you here uh, has been like, hey, I got this going on. We tried to get you here in May. Yep. In May, you were in Jerusalem on a family trip. Family trip in Jerusalem, yep. Uh, so that was incredible. Just came back from France. Uh, we did a 15-year anniversary trip of, uh, in the south of France, which was incredible. And uh, now I'm here in uh, beautiful uh, Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> it's, it's just like the south of France. It's the same. Yeah, yeah, more or less. The, the cafes, cafes, the views of the water. Yep, on the water. Monaco, Nice. Yep. You can hardly I'll, tell the difference. I, I can't even tell. <laughs> so, dude, that's that's quite the year of travel for you. Thanks, did you man, ever did that. you ever dream that that kind of travel would be possible when you got started in the life insurance business? No, never. Uh, I was never that a goal of yours? It wasn't a goal. It was uh, my goal of when I started in life insurance was just to survive uh, <laughs> and make my first, uh, you know, thirty thousand dollars is what I made my first year thirty thirty five. Right. That's awesome. So it, that was just survival mode for me. I never thought I'd be able to, you know, travel to places like Jerusalem or France or this, uh, that would become a possibility in, by, in this industry, yeah. by doing the work in this industry. So, so I want to pause and say happy anniversary Appreciate that. to you and Katie. Thank you. 15 years. 15 years. Married. How did you meet? How did you guys meet? So we, yeah, we met in church. Um, so, you know, we're, uh, you know, I'm Ukrainian, she's Russian. So that's a, that, that community is very, uh, you know, everybody knows each other. So we met at church and mm. uh, yeah, we hit it off pretty quickly. Uh, d dated for nine months and got married. That's awesome, yeah, man. Thanks, man. 15 years later, you're on Monaco. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's no that's, dream, dream, uh, dream anniversary trip for sure. That's awesome. We did thanks, our, uh, I planned our 25th anniversary, a two week trip to uh, Italy, and we toured all over Italy. I think I might have, we, we might have shared a little bit of that story. Yeah. Uh, maybe a month or two back when we first connected and started talking. But um, Jerusalem trip, that, that was a cool trip for you. Yeah, um, it was incredible, man. You know, we're we're Christian, right? So that's important to us, and we wanted to. It was kind of a bucket list trip for us, and we wanted mm -hmm. to go out there and, uh, you know, the Bible. As a believer, you know, you read the Bible, and you're mm -hmm. but when you when you go there, it becomes it becomes real. Yeah, right. So it was it was uh, it was incredible. Yeah, big bu bucket list trip. You're seeing stuff that you only ever imagined before, right? Oh, totally. Yeah, for the right? first time. Yeah, um, you know Jerusalem. I think that there was it's the fastest archaeological site in the world, or the fastest uh, the prog the progressive the progress of archaeology is is faster than anywhere else in the world. So yeah. a lot of that stuff becomes very real when you you know. And they're still uncovering things. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that crazy. It's incredible. So, brother, we're here to talk about insurance. You guys thought we were going to talk about travel in Jerusalem and <laughs> south of France for this entire episode. We're not. Uh, but if you want to know more about that, I'm sure uh, Roman will leave his uh, his contact and you can reach out to him about how to arrange that trip to Nice. Right. <laughs> uh, but man, we're excited to have you in. So tell me about how long you've been in the insurance business. Yeah. So 15 years, uh, you know, started so out. Your, as a, your wife got you in. 
Well, yeah, <laughs> Sounds the, like the no, 15 well, yeah, year anniversary. 15, it was it was all happening at once, man. We got I I got married and then I uh, I got licensed. Um, so it kind of all happened at once. You're usually supposed to get your license before you get married. I don't know how that yeah, works. You know, it was it was. A oh, weird... you're talking about a life insurance license. Uh, or I was talking about your marriage license. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was. It, we started out started out selling health insurance. Ah. Um, so under 65 stuff, okay. right? Work inside, worked inside of a, a call center agency, mm-hmm. uh, did that for a decade and then, uh, um, a decade. Yeah. How so, much, did, how much money did you make your first year? Yeah. Again, it was, it was roughly 30, 35,000, you know, 35, and it was, 000. it was survival mode. I knew there was, there was, there was potential there. Obviously I saw mm-hmm. it, you know, from colleagues and friends and, uh, but yeah, that was, it wasn't, you know, like 30, 35,000 for, it was it was survival mode, yeah, right. Um, but never dreamed that it would could become uh, so much more at the levels where I've I've experienced just in the last three few years. Yeah, so it's exciting and it's a blessing. So how did you transition? You're in life sales now, correct? And how did you transit? What segment of life sales are you in? So final expense, final expense. Right. That's all I focus on is final expense, which I love just because the simplicity of a final expense sale. Nice. Right, as opposed to a health insurance sale, you know, I health insurance was, uh, you know, and, and some people, some people love health insurance. I did it for a decade, loved it, mm-hmm. but uh, it can be there's a lot of moving parts to a, a health sale, right? A lot of changes, especially with the ACA and the mm-hmm. Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. Um, lot there's a lot of variables that you have that, that are always moving around. So, you know, switching over to life sales was incredible for me because it was such a simple sale. And I, I was like, Oh my gosh, I can really, I can see what, how you can actually scale this thing. Right. Yeah. So now you start out in a call center. Correct. Did you ever go to face to face sales in life or was it always over no, the phone? It was always over the phone. And so, you know, so I, you're I, still over the phone now, final correct. expense all over the phone, all over the phone. 100%. Right? 100%. Never did face to face. And I didn't know any other way, really. I, you know, because inside of a call center, man, you're just taking calls every day. Yeah. Right. I mean, you're taking, you're either starting out, we were, I was calling out, right. You're doing hundred calls a day, 150 calls a day. And then eventually we, we were starting to get inbound, but you're just on the phone transitioning to a, a, uh, as a life to a life agent. You know, I had no idea that you could actually do this face to face. I was like, man, I just, I'm going to pick up the phone and just call leads, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's how you do it. I found out later that you can actually do the face to face thing. That's what most final expense. That's the way most final expense agents actually sell is face to face. Yeah, I didn't know any better. I just kept I just did the the, the, the telephone thing. I'm like, I got to dial I got to make my 100 calls, I got to make my 150 calls. And uh, it was that was, you know, a little bit of an uphill uphill battle, right. Um, but I had uh, over time, mm-hmm. you know, you, you do build that, uh, you know, people ask me all the time, well, how do you, how do you, you know, what, what, what makes you, what make, what, how can you become a great telesales agent? Mm-hmm. And the number one thing to me is, is, uh, the discipline on activity, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right. And I learned that inside of that call center. Mm-hmm. So, um, making that transition, I wouldn't say it was easy. But it was it was simple, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and all of our teaching sessions that we do around the country, our boot camps and workshops, I usually start out at the beginning of those uh, sessions because some people come into our telesales workshops that we do and think we're just going to get right down to it. Where's the script? Where's the close? How do you handle the ejections? What are the rebuttals? You know, how many leads do I need? Where are the secret leads? What are the best leads? You know, do you know about special leads that nobody else knows about? Like everybody thinks they're secrets and you're going to give them this magic formula. And always open up. It's the discipline of your consistency that is the biggest determiner of your success. So let's get that out here right now, yeah. right up front. 1, Tell me about that. What, what what about that is do most where you see most agents fail uh, and other agents succeed? Talk about that. Yeah. So I think most agents, you know, there's what's the stat? Ninety percent of agents failed in the first two years. Is that what it is? Ninety two. Roughly ninety two percent. Right. Um, and it's just. Uh, you know, you have to, you agents, I think agents give up way too early. You know, I've, I've worked with some of the agents, uh, that, uh, that, uh, closely worked with some of the agents and after a month two three months, uh, they quit too early. And there's a, I, I think it's mainly because of just three reasons, right? There's, uh, 
lack of skills. You got to skill up a little bit to, mm -hmm. you know, because you got to sell yourself, sell the problem, sell the solution. If you can do that, right, then you can take, you can you can work the law of large numbers mm -hmm. on leads. Yeah. Right. So if you, so number one, I see agents not being able to make it outlast the outlast that I think that one year trial, right? I think it's like 12 months. If you can make that past that 12 months, mm -hmm. the, the odds are in your favor of you making it. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, um, but number two is, is, uh, is a cash flow problem. Right. So again, you, if you're a new agent, you're buying, you're going to spend your first $2,000 or $3,000 on leads. Um, what you mean? You got to buy leads or invest in leads, leads? Right. What's that? Right. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> and if you can't close, you're going to peel off another two, 3,000. And then if you can't close, uh, well, you're, you're, you're out of money. And then that's when I see most agents quit after their maybe first, second or third month. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the, you know, again, the, the skill thing, right. You mm -hmm. got to know how to close just at a very basic level. Uh, and as long as you do, you won't have that cash flow problem. Uh, but the other thing, the big third, the big thing, the third big thing is activity, man. What was uh, number two? So we talked about scaling up, scaling up uh, the cash flow issue, cash flow. But uh, I think activity trumps everything. Got it. Like if you if you have your activity at a high level, man, I don't care if you have a cash flow problem. I don't care if you have a closing problem, dude. You're gonna accidentally make sales. Uh, we talk about the law of, law of large numbers and mm -hmm. in, in terms of in terms of leads. Yes, you get enough leads, man, and you have an activity level that's high. You're gonna you're gonna close deals. That's right. If you skill up a little bit, okay, great. Now you're gonna close even more, and you won't have that cash flow problem, and you're gonna be able to reinvest that initial two three thousand dollars and just keep going. I love that framework. Skill up, sell yourself, sell the problem, sell the solution, make the law of large numbers work for you. Manage the cash flow invest wisely, get a good return on your investment, but massive activity, massive activity basically covers, uh, the cash flow issue covers the multitude of sins. and helps you skill up. <laughs> yeah, right. Your activity leads to you skilling up because there's things that you cannot learn until you're actually in the process. Absolutely. Right. Until you get in the fight. Uh, who is it that said, Everybody has a game plan until they get punched in the mouth. Right. Right. Mike Tyson. Yes. <laughs> right. And so, um, like there's things you just can't learn, right? Um, when you went to France, to the south of France, there was things there that you were like, oh, this is how this happens here. And you can read about it. You can see it on a, you know, on a website or a travel blog or something like that. But until you get there, you go, that's why. This is why they do that. It's like when we were climbing, you know, you climb a mountain. I mean, there's certain things that you don't know until you get in the fight, how you're going to physiologically respond to certain things. And then how you adapt and overcome and that activity is really leads to that skilling up. Absolutely, man. Yeah, exactly. Like you come to France, man, until you, you read about it in pictures and social media, but you won't, there's nothing like experiencing in person, right? So that's the same thing on the phone. You got to find your voice. Uh, find you gotta, your voice. I like that. You find your voice and, um, and, uh, you know, get the feel of, you know, I, I would say don't be scared of failing because you're, that's mm -hmm. the best way to learn. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll add, if, again, going back to that activity level at a super high level, you'll be able to quickly realize, okay, what are the objections I'm going to be facing? Yeah. Because they're all, all more or less all the same, right? There's those same objections over and over again. Um, and, uh, you know, if you get, you get, if you get, if you get through enough calls, you'll be able to quickly tell, uh, what to expect the first 30 seconds of the call two first two minutes of the call first five minutes, you know, mm -hmm. five minutes of the call, you can just predict what's going to happen next. Yeah. And that's when the magic happens. Once yeah. you start able to be able to predict what's going to happen on the phone call, anywhere on the phone call, because of how it's gone to that point. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. It's being in the environment. Cor exactly. I right. was watching, um, I was watching a docu-series, a new docu-series called special ops. It's on Netflix, just came out. It's about all these special operations that the U.S. military did around the world and uh, just the stuff that was going on. And um, one of them was about, uh, you know, when the trade towers got hit, oh. you know, 9-11. Uh, and um, when they sent a team over there and they called on a, on a guy who was in the field in Afghanistan for 
25 years, right? He had connections, he had people on the ground, he had relationships, and, and he was getting ready to retire, literally retire within like 60 days. And he got the call, said, would you lead a team back into Afghanistan to try to uncover Al-Qaeda? And, you know, the, and um, the reason why they did that was because he had the experience. He'd, he'd put in the reps, he'd done the things, and so he has a perspective totally. that other people don't have. And it was amazing as I was watching this, I'm like, experience in and of itself is one of the best teachers ever. They say experience is the best teacher. I've always said that someone else's experience can equally be as good a teacher because you don't have to learn all the expensive lessons on the way if you can trust the advice. Sometimes people don't trust the advice. Some people say, well, do it this way. And they say, well, I think I'm going to try it that way. And they go and fail and lose money. And then they come back and then they start doing it the way you recommend it. And then they realize there's a method and there's, there's a strategy behind that. Experience is a fantastic teacher. And without the activity at a high level, you cannot get that. You cannot get those level, uh, that level of experience, um, knowledge to know, hey, I'm at this point in the call based on everything I've done and these other thousand calls I've made over the past two weeks. This is what's going to happen now the rest of the call. I've gotten the client to here. Now my next two steps are this, and now I can find a solution and we can, we can help this family. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. Your experience is, is massively, I think, underrated, right? Because everybody's looking for a shortcut. Um, and you can't, I mean, there's, there's shortcuts, like guys like you and I, I mean, we can, we can coach people and tell people like, Hey, look, this is, these are the pitfalls to watch out for. This is what you need to do. And mm -hmm. we can whisper in the ear and this and that. But ultimately I think experience massively underrated because you need to give that time. Patience is so, you need patience just to get through, give yourself a chance. I would say 12 months, man, give yourself 12 months to see if this thing actually will work for you. Because if it does, man, I don't, you know, then you get to travel to France. <laughs> mm -hmm. We have these things called uh, emotional intelligence, right? EQ, right. Yeah. EQ. Uh, people have IQ. They say, well, I've learned about this. I've learned about that. I have that skill. I have this. But you see people fail out uh, at multiple things in life. And you wonder, what are the common denominators? And sometimes it's a, uh, the, their EQ is not at the level of their IQ. And their EQ is that emotional intelligence that, when you get punched in the face, when things are not going well, how do you respond to that adversity? How do you respond to those challenges? Do you see it as an opportunity to first improve or are you seeking profit first? Are you seeking improvement or are you seeking profit? If you're seeking improvement, profit will come. If you're seeking profit, it becomes a, you know, an exercise in futility. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, that's really good. I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because if you're seeking profit, you're, you're going to end up taking shortcuts. Correct. And yeah. you lose sales that you otherwise would have got if you just stopped and listened. Absolutely. Because underneath that layer, just like in Jerusalem, it's one of the fastest growing and most developed archaeological sites in the world. Right. How do they get to that? They do it by like brushing away things slowly so as not to destroy it. But they've got to uncover it. They've got to uncover it to see what's under there. Because you can't just assume that it's under there and take a hammer and a pick and go straight in. You'll, you'll, you'll destroy everything. They've got to do it. so and, and so they're slowly uncovering this thing. And all of a sudden... This is revealed, this, this history that have been there all these years, that have been under everyone's feet, under everyone's nose, has all of a sudden been revealed. And people have these needs right inside. And it just takes a little bit of patience to unbrush that man and to let that need come to the surface. And then when those people reveal that internal need, man, you can help them. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. I think whatever level you're at, mm -hmm. you want to you wanna squeeze, and this is really for the, you know, for the newer agents, but even if you're a senior agent, mm -hmm. squeeze everything you can out of the level that you're at. And, and so you can take the next step. Don't, don't skip steps, right? Give yourself that, that 12 months. Mm -hmm. um, and eventually, I mean, I, I don't think it, it, it should take anybody 15 years to get to these levels. Yeah. Right. But I'm thankful for those 15 years. Honestly, man, I'm looking yeah. back and I'm like, I don't think I'd be able to make it. I'm not a, I'm look, I, I have, way less talent than most other life insurance agents. I just put in the work and, and the time. Well, let's talk about some of your results and some transition periods for you. So you made $30,000 your first year, 35,000. Yeah. Uh, how, uh, how much life production did you write in the, in the last full 12 month period uh, over the phone? Yeah, so I just cleared about, I wrote about half a million. A half a million, half dollars, a million dollars, all over the phone. All over the phone, final expense. Final expense. Yeah, so and last, you, Go. And you don't and you don't do that by calling 20 leads a day. No, 
Uh, you you got to do a little bit more. I mean, you know, eventually you can get to the point where you might only end up making 20 calls and then you, because your pipeline is so full, right? Yes. You got referrals coming in and you got scheduled callbacks and yeah. inbound calls and outbound and et cetera. But yeah, I mean, you won't get there with, 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 a with, a with doing this part-time. So let's say you're multiple six figure earner now, right? Which is a very real, uh, uh, real, uh, it's a reality that's possible. And most new agents, when they look at this business, like that number seems so unattainable. Could you see that number? No. When you started? No, I couldn't. Right. Because do you even believe it now a little bit? No. <laughs> how do you feel when like you it's, look at that number and you, how does that make you feel? Yeah. I mean, it's, do you feel like you're cheating or you found something that you don't want to share or do you feel like you want to tell the world? No, I do. Like what, what's, what's the emotion? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it doesn't feel real. It feels, it, it, it's interesting. That's a great question. Um, it doesn't excite me as much as I thought it would. I don't know why, because I feel like I have this, I have this number in mind and I feel like a much bigger number would excite me. I, I hope that doesn't come off as, yeah. uh, I don't know, arrogant or whatever, but I mean, it's cool. Sounds like you're tracking for a million. To I'm me. tracking for a million, man. There you go. See, now we're getting somewhere. I'm tracking for a million. There I think go. that's possible. That's the number that would a actually year. get a year. A year. That would that number would would excite me. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's yeah. What so, would that do for the legacy of your family to be able to achieve those levels? I mean, has anybody in your yeah, in your no, family ever achieved no, those kind of levels? No, man. We're we're immigrants, right? I mean, we moved to the states in 1990 from the Ukraine. Yeah. Right. Uh, so we were refugees. Uh, yeah, that would be huge for my family. Hmm. Um, so it. It's it's important to me. It's important to my family, and and yeah, that's a that's a that's a real goal. It's a real target, and I think it's uh, it it would be it would it's it's life changing. Not that these numbers are not life changing now, but <laughs> uh, it's you know you ask the uh, question about emotion. That's that's what would evoke some real excitement. Yeah. Um, is it something that anyone can do? Yeah, I think so. I mean, again, going back to that activity, uh, you know, I, I like I, I'm not a big fancy life insurance guy, right? I mean, I, I think there's uh, I look I look at some of these other guys, colleagues, and people I know in the space, and I'm like, man, you are so talented, and wow. I mean, like I wish I knew what you did because mm -hmm. I'm a one trick pony, man. I do final expense. I just do it at a very high level, right? And so uh, I think anybody can do what I do. Um, you just got to put in again, you, you need the patience, you need the time you need, you need to actually skill up a little bit, yeah. uh, focus, put in the work and, uh, take that, take that, take that cash flow and, and reinvest. So 35,000 year one, 15 years ago, half a million now over here. I mean, you know, I know we went from earnings to production, but sure. depending on what your contract is, it's probably North of a <laughs> North of half a million. If we, if we were to be honest here, um, I know you have expenses and things like sure. that, and you reinvest in leads and marketing in your business. Uh, but very healthy six-figure lifestyle. What were the significant transition periods where you had, like, breakthroughs, where you were like, ah, oh, and you crossed that six-figure threshold for the first time, and then the quarter-million threshold is like, were there, were there some pivotal points? What were the transition? Because there's a lot of people that mm -hmm. watch and listen, and they're making, like, $70,000, $80,000, Right, they're reinvesting in leads. After their investment in leads, they net about fifty, and it's not what they thought the insurance business was going to be, or not what it's actually painted to be, or you know, purported to be. Um, how does that person and and so that person I want to speak to? What transition points were there for you when you kind of had some breakthroughs? Were there any aha moments? Were there any like, hey, if I focus on this and just get good at that, and and like that you can remember that you are like anchor points for you in your career looking back so that as you're now coaching a team, which you and your partner Gilbert are now growing with, uh, with your company, um, like that you're going to be teaching them the, 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 those, those, those transition points. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah. I mean, and so I would say for me personally, it was just getting really good at, uh, at selling final expense. I knew, I knew I was really good at selling health insurance. Mm -hmm. And I think if you get really get commit to getting really good at the one thing, mm -hmm. right. I mean, there's, and I'll, I'll explain. So with health insurance, making that transition from health insurance 
to life insurance. I was still using that first couple of years, I was still using health insurance as a door opener to sell term. Gotcha. Mainly because of the uh, built in critical illness. Correct. Right. That provided some more value for health insurance clients. Plus, hey, you got a you got a life policy as well. Right. Gotcha. And so that was the aha, big aha moment for me was like, well, dude, why can't I just go buy a lead and sell life insurance direct? That would be probably a whole lot easier. Mm -hmm. Right. So but again, I had to get really good at that one thing. So going back that transition point for me, I was like focused on, okay, how can I get good at this? What does that sales process look like from beginning to end? And I just began to break it down. Mm -hmm. And I looked at just, you know, moving the needle right on that pitch, if that makes sense. I was like, mm -hmm. I was looking for smaller wins on that. I wasn't looking for a, 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 a big win right off the bat. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't looking to, uh, there's no Hail Marys. There's no Hail the Marys. Gate. You were, yeah, man, I was looking for just small wins, right? Whether five, it was five, ten yards at a time, five, ten yards at a time, whether it was number of calls, whether it was in the pitch itself. Um, and so the big aha moment for me, I would say, is focus on the small wins, getting really good at that one thing. Oh, sorry, my voice is cracking. That's all right. <laughs> so do you remember when you actually broke through six figures for the first time? Do you, do you remember how long ago that was? Uh, well, yeah, I, I was at six figures even at the health insurance stages. Okay. Um, so we were, you know, so let's go to quarter million. Do you remember when you crossed that threshold for the first time? Cause that seems to be the net, the next natural benchmark that most people shoot for. Correct. Yeah, I do. And, uh, you know, I kind of, I didn't even realize I did it. Uh, when I, was that? That would have been three years ago, three years ago, 2020. So in three, that would have been 2020. So in three years, you went from quarter million to yeah. over half a million. Correct. So like this long incubation period, right? You, but you, you went from 35, tripled it, got to 100, right? And then three years ago, you surpassed a quarter, uh, quarter million. And then in the last three years, you doubled that again to half a million. Correct. Yeah. So 2020, that would have been the year that I actually cleared that quarter of a million. 2020 was obviously a horrible year for the entire planet, but mm -hmm. it was really good for, for final expense sales. Especially if you were already in the full speed on the, over the phone. Right. A lot of face-to-face -face agents had the ground pulled out from under that. They, they felt like the earth was moved. Right. And that, Scrambling. I didn't even, uh, correct. And I didn't realize, uh, you know, that was actually what you, well, what a lot of final expense agents were doing is just the face to face thing. Mm. Again, I didn't realize I just, I just kept picking up the phone and dialing. So yeah. that quarter of a million was, is, it, yeah, that was, that was a big uh, benchmark obviously. Um, but, uh, it, and, and again, I mean, that, that was, uh, if I was, if I were to, look at what an agent is, you know, try look at that transition points for an agent and why they're not hitting some of the transition points. I mean, we obviously want to start at the basics, like, okay, where are you at on, uh, on your skill level, on your work ethic? And what's your cash flow look like? I think I think those three points, there may be more, but those three points are so important to me. I would look at those first and then maybe look at them at, at where they're getting stuck. Maybe mm -hmm. some one-on-one -on -one coaching would, would make more sense and look at each person individually uh, and see where they're getting stuck. Is it, uh, you know, is it on the pitch? Is it, 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 is it number of dials? It can be something, something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that answered yeah, that, that, that totally answered question. the question. So here at, uh, life Insurance Academy and my life personally, I'm about impact. I'm about making a difference. I'm about, uh, if you've been watching the podcast or listening for some time, you realize my goal is not just about the finances. Although I'm talking to Roman about finance, I'm talking to you about finances and benchmarks. The reason I'm doing that is because when people first start listening, trying to break into a new career, they're generally trying to do something that's going to bring some more financial stability to their own life. So I always, I always have to go there and, and show people there is a path to financial success. Once you have financial success, there's so much more you can do in your life, right? Um, and there's a path. And the reason why we, that I'm, I'm talking about this is not because it's the most important thing to me, but it's the motivator that gets people started. Um, it's the motivator that allows uh, people to uh, see the opportunity for what it is and start taking steps to maybe take a career change, which sounds scary at first. But now they can see, well, other people can do it and they're doing it at a high level. I, I think I can do it too. So it's this pattern of success. Uh, you guys are now, you and your partner Gilbert with uh, Achieve More Partners are now growing and scaling your own company, your own business, and teaching other agents how to do the very thing that you're doing. Um, 
what is your why? What are some of the whys that Roman has in his life? Because I know for you, it's not all about the money. No, it's not. It's it's freedom is the big one. Yeah. Right. Uh, so f- for me, it's freedom to like work from wherever I want. I mean, I can go on vacation and work from my laptop if I want to. And uh, it's freedom to kind of, you know, just do what I want when I want. Right. I don't mm-hmm. want to be tied to uh, a cubicle mm-hmm. uh, like I was for so many years. Um, that is a big why. And, and I'm thankful for those years, by the way. Um, very thankful for those years because that, that developed a massive discipline for me and a massive mm-hmm. uh, muscle. Uh, but freedom is, is probably the biggest thing for me. Um, I don't, you know, this gives me the opportunity to, if you have the work ethic, I don't have anybody else telling me what to do, how to do it. Clock in, clock out, that sort of thing. So that would be no, number one thing for me. And I know, you know, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier. You're, you're refugees from Ukraine, yep. 1990. 1990. That wasn't that long ago, man. Yeah, yeah. 30 years ago. How old are you now? Yeah, um, well, 39. Yeah, so you were like, you were just a kid, yeah. right? When your family uh, came, you came directly to the U.S.? Correct. And, you know, with everything going on between Ukraine and Russia right now, it's just a sad, it's a sad, it's a sad thing. It makes my, it hurts my heart, man, to, to see you know, our world and these strives and conflicts. But so this idea of freedom for you is important for probably a lot more reasons than just, hey, I want to be financially free in America. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, there's no freedom. I mean, it was, you know, we came, we moved to the States. My, my family moved to the States for freedom. Yeah. Right. And so, um, yeah, freedom is, is huge for me. Not just, not just, not just within the, the workspace, but I think that the fact that we immigrated from a place like Ukraine, which was a post-Soviet Union state, um, I think a lot of that does transition to, you know, wanting that freedom in every area of my life. So uh, I was never good with uh, people telling me what to do and how to do it, man. I just, I can't. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'd rather put in the sweat, blood, and tears and and make sure I'm successful on my own without having me answer to somebody else, if that makes sense. Tell me about what your motivation would be in, in showing other people the opportunity and how they can uh, maybe change their lives through this business and how you guys at Achieve More Partners uh, are doing that. And why is that important to you? Well, I think, you know, look, we're, we're, we live in a, uh, an environment that is actually built for capitalists. And I think that's different for everybody. And I think that's I think that's great because look, there's some people that might want to achieve these, these high producing number, th- these high numbers. Mm-hmm. And for somebody else, maybe they just want to go ahead and, and buy their dream car They're Maybe they want a, a Porsche and they're like, Hey, you know what? I just want to get to this goal and that's it. I'm done. I, I've talked to people like that. They're like, dude, I just want to buy this car and that's it. I just want to work hard enough to get to this car. And I'm like, that's great. I'm like, you can do this vehicle, this, this vehicle mm-hmm. of, selling insurance over the phone can get you there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that's the great thing. It's like you, you but you, having a target is important. Having your why is important. Um, and I think that uh, whatever, whatever your goal is, I think this, this, this space can get you there. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that answered that question. Yeah. How do you feel like you uh, and your partner are, are well positioned to help people navigate that gauntlet? and be successful in launching their I, own career. What I, would you say to new people that are considering say, "Hey, I'd like to connect with Roman?" Yeah, what, I mean, what what are the what are the, why them? Why what, us? Yeah. Why you? We we have we have the street cred, if you will, right? Um and it's taken a long time to get here and I I there's a lot of coaches out there. I don't know what they're, you know, they unfortunately the space is filled with people. It's it's a uh, man, there's a lot of there's a lot of um MLM stuff in the space. Unfortunately, I hate to say that, but Mm -hmm. right. So, uh, you know, like people just focus on recruiting so much. Um, and there's a lot of options. There's a lot of great agencies, Mm -hmm. agencies to go through. Um, but some of that stuff, man, I'm looking at some of the stuff and I'm like, dude, you just, you just got into the industry and now you're trying to recruit people. I don't, how many policies have you sold? Like, why would you, and this is, I think one of the biggest reasons why this failure rate is so high, 90, 92% is -hmm. because people are recruiting without actually Without, without they, they haven't done the work to, to, re, to recruit. Mm-hmm. I'm just now, Gilbert and I are just now starting to recruit people. Yeah. And so, but we've, 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 be, we've been able to, we can show you how to get there. Yeah. Right. And so we have the street cred, if you will. 
Um, I would say it's that would be the number one reason that anybody would at the very least test it out, give give it a shot, test you mm -hmm. know see see get your feet wet. I have I have um I have friends and people that are in the industry that are in some of those former models that you just spoke about. And I think in some of the areas of those models and overwhelmingly probably as the uh, majority of the focus, they are sold the idea of what the insurance career can do for them. And the people who brought them in are not properly equipped to train them how to be profitable and actually help families in a home, you know, um, navigate the, their needs, understand the product, identify it, and then help them with a the solution. And the focus then just becomes on hiring others. And I don't think it's at any fault of the agent. I think it's just that's that's the system that they're brought into. And because there's so many people that lack specific skill training, it's just not taught. And so the emphasis on, is on the other thing, which to them is easy, which is to tell the story and recruit. And so I don't actually see it as a fault of the person getting in. I just see it as this is a segment of our industry that we can do better in. We can do better, right? And, for the, and that's the reason why we have the Life Insurance Academy. Yeah. I mean, we are trying to teach people how to be um, effective, profitable agents who serve families to make a difference, to help people meet their needs, to make a significant difference in their life so you can take care of the people that are most important to you. But then how to grow and scale an agency to teach other people how to do the same thing. And yes, they can recruit, but you better be teaching your people how to become profitable and sell and how to help families and how to navigate a transaction and to turn it from a transaction to a meaningful interaction that makes a significant difference in their life. So it's not just a transactional play. And so there's this, there's this, uh, there's always this juxtaposition of the values. You know, some people are just all sales focus and they very slow to grow. Other people are just growth focus and they have a high turnover because they're not training their people on how to become profitable. And there's this great balance, man. I'm so so excited for this opportunity with you guys. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, no, nothing wrong with a. Um, I said MLM. You know, nothing wrong. I love that model. Everything. You know, everything. Almost every company has an MLM model. But like you said, there's a lot of people. A lot of agents are not at their fault of their own. They're just taught that way. That hey, man, you gotta you gotta recruit. Um, and that's but because the people that are supporting them don't know how to teach them. Right. Exactly. Right. And that sets you guys apart. Yeah, and like you said, you have to have that balance. Yeah. So I'm excited for for the opportunity, man. I really feel for agents. I really do, man. I've already worked with a good number of agents, and they, um, you know, there's there's a number of things. There has to be, you have to meet us at the 50 yard line. So for anybody that does want to work for us, I mean, it's not magic. There's no magic. There's no secret. There's no magic bullet. You have to meet us at the 50 yard line. If you put an effort, I will match that effort. That's awesome. Um, so, but, and again, I've worked with, and I do feel for agents because I've, I've seen where, you know, they, they're maybe not skilled up. They don't have the work ethic. Maybe they don't have the cash to buy the leads, that sort of thing. And I do feel for them, but I, I would, I would advise against like just trying, trying to get into this industry and starting to recruit because you're going to, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot and, uh, leave prematurely. Yeah. Well, uh, here's the cool thing, everybody. And we're going to wrap this episode here. But this guy and his partner, Gilbert, uh, are absolutely filled with knowledge on how to be successful in this space. And we couldn't get it all in this one episode. So we're actually going to do some more with them. And it's going to be available on the back end of the Life Insurance Academy so that we can actually uh, share that with you. Because I know people are asking, what type of leads do you work? Do you use a CRM? You know, what's your lead flow look like? Uh, what type of leads? Uh, what's your dial patterns? How do you handle objections? What does your open sound like? Like there's just so much and that's for train some training segments. And so um, uh, Roman actually has some content on the back where he's done some coaching on our Thursday power group coaching calls. I think he did one with Chris. So there's some really good valuable content on there. If you're not already a subscriber to uh, the Life Insurance Academy um, courses and coaching, you can take advantage of that. Just go to our website, lifeinsuranceacademy.org. You can find that out, but I'm excited for you to get to know this guy and uh, for um, for you to uh, be able to learn from him. Um, Roman, uh, it's been a pleasure, man, having you on the on the on the podcast. I can't wait to see where you guys go and uh, what you're doing. I love the West Coast influence, man. Let's 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 make a difference Thanks, out there. Man, the Northwest, that. man. The Northwest, it's like one right. of my most beautiful places in the country. If you've never been out to that part. 
of course, I'm biased uh, because being Canadian, I visited the Northwest up in Vancouver and British Columbia. But that whole region, man, all the Beautiful. way down through there is just yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely. So, but you help agents all over the country. You're licensed in how many states? Over 40. Over 40. Yeah. So if you guys want to reach out and connect with Roman, how would they do that, man? Uh, best way, I mean, you can reach me. I mean, you can find me on social, uh, email. I can throw Social at what? What is your social uh, Roman V. Koval. Roman, R-O-M-A-N. R-O-M-A-N, V. Koval, K-O-V-A-L. That's a strong name, isn't it? Roman oh, V. Koval. That. <laughs> That's strong. <laughs> V for victory. Uh, it's the V for victory, that's right. <laughs> Sound like a superhero, man. Thanks. Roman V. Koval on? Uh, Roman V. Koval, Instagram, uh, Facebook. Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yep, yeah. absolutely. Perfect. So. Connect with them there and uh, hit them up. Ask them whatever questions. And if you got some questions for Roman, you can drop it in our comments. If you're watching on YouTube, we'd love to ha ha have some comments or questions. And uh, I'm sure Roman will be watching those and be able to jump in and answer some of those questions for you. Thanks, man, for being Roger, on the show today. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. We'll see you guys on the next episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast.